Hello there and welcome to this video. This is an unboxing of the Arky dashboard camera. Now this is going to be replacing a dash cam that I previously unboxed a few months ago that has now actually died. It was a decent camera when it worked but it got stuck in a reboot loop just kept restarting itself and it, it just wouldn't turn off either so it was just left making noises until it wasn't completely flat. So that failed catastrophically and this one's here now so hopefully work and replace it but this one cost a bit more so hopefully this is going to be a better quality as well at night time it does get really good reviews on amazon which is where i purchased it from okay so that's the packaging off then we gotta open the box which is rather plain it's just very basic there's not a lot on the outside it says go green uh, the camera etc so in the box we've got a spongy foam padding which is protecting the camera that's here. So here's the camera unit itself. We'll get to that in a second. What else have we got in here? There is a long USB to a mini USB cable. This is not micro USB. You can see that. So that's quite a long length, they're good for rooting around the windscreen and uh, up under the dashboard and stuff like that. We've then also got this car cigarette lighter power supply, which is dual USB, so you can charge your phone or whatever else. Now the last dash cam I had just had a plain plug-in uh, cigarette lighter thing, it didn't have a USB connector on it, it just went to this. So I couldn't charge my phone or anything in the car, I had to use my uh, battery bank in order to charge my phone and carry that with me but, so this will be a lot more convenient as well so that is a nice touch it says here on the back of this it's 12 to 24 volts which means it will work in lorries and trucks and the output is 5 volts DC at 3.1 amps I imagine the dash cam requires about an amp so then you've got 2.1 amp to charge uh, phones, tablets, whatever else you might need to charge. So what else have we got in here? Well, we've got some cable holder clips with 3M sticky pads. So that's for keeping the cable out of the way and rooting it around the edges of the car. Then it doesn't get pulled or caught. We've got a sticky suction cup mount from the windscreen. We've also got a sticky pad mount to mount it to the windscreen here. And then we've got some extra sticky pads here which are for this, looking at the size of them. I'll probably use the suction cup mount. And then the model of this camera by the way is the DR01, it says there on the manual. In here we've got this golden thing, or oh, 24 month product warranty. So this is for uh, registering your warranty. I'll have to do that later. We've got these sticky pads, and we've got the instruction manual. So English is pages 1 through 6, so this gives you a good quick rundown of everything that the camera does and how to set it up. I'll uh, show you some of that in a moment anyway. This does not come with a micro SD card, but that's not a problem because I've got a SanDisk Ultra card here from my previous dash cam that I'm going to be putting into this. Okay, so just here's a quick look at the detailed information. So you can see this is a DR1 model dash cam. It uses a Sony sensor, 2.19 megapixel. That's the CPU model number. This green is 2 inches, it has a 170 degree wide angle lens on the front, meaning it can see a lot in front of the camera. Uh, as well we've got a PC ABS and glass that it's constructed from. Uh, recording resolution is 1080p 30fps, 720p 60, 720p 30, WVGA and VGA resolutions. So that's widescreen VGA and normal VGA. It takes images in JPEG format. You can have sound recording on or off. There's a gravity sensor, which is if you accelerate at high speed, 
uh, stopped or someone ran into you, it would detect that and automatically lock the video file on the camera. So you don't have to manually press the button to lock it. Then we've got loop recording, motion detection, time lapse or emergency recording modes. Then there's the exposure value which can be changed here. So a few different settings, depending on whether the camera is getting washed out in the day or it's too dark at night, you would adjust these up and down. It supports micro SD cards up to 128GB. You should use a class 10 card for this because these generally perform best. And it operates between minus 30 degrees C and plus 75 degrees C. It takes 5 volts DC at 1 to 2 amps. Probably 1 amp is more like what this is going to consume. And that's the overall size of it. And this is the indicator on the side of the camera, there's an LED light. And when it is solid green, it's turned on but not recording. Flashing green, it's on and recording. And off, the camera is off. So yeah, there we go. There's the uh, instructions as well. Let's have a look at the camera. The screen protector on it there. Four buttons along the bottom. One OK, up, down and the triangle warning there. The power in is on the top, along with this connector, which is for connecting a GPS module which puts the speed and location into video so you can have those overlaid at the bottom this is the micro SD card slot there's an AV output which is for displaying the video out onto a TV or to a capture device uh, there's a little light here and I think a reset button looking at it not much on the bottom, not much on that side or on the front you can see the lens it's got the cover over it here to protect it. There's the clip where it mounts, so you can just slide that in and on and off. And that's it really for the, the camera. Okay, so I'm just going to pull this screen protector off. I can get hold of it. Like so. And I've plugged the wall powered the uh, USB cable into a wall charger, USB wall charger for a phone and I'm just going to use that to power this thing on and have a play with it here so I would expect it to come on, the light's gone green will it auto power on or do I have to, oh there we go so where's the setup, uh, English obviously the date and time, so it's set to the 1st of January 2016 that's a good question, what date is it today? It is 2017, or oh, 2050, no, 2017. How do I go across, would that be that one? Oh no, that's back. English, 2017, okay. It is October, so that's 10. And it is the 27th. The time is 13.47 uh, I want day, month, year That's good for me Okay, so the camera's on and it's filming now uh, well, we're not filming because there's no card in it, but that's everything set up. So, next up, let's have a look in the settings, I guess. I want, yeah, the settings, I think. Resolution. We've got that set to 1080p, which is 1080 at 30 frames per second. This camera can also do 720p at 60, 720p at 30, 480, and uh, that's it really, but I'm just going to leave mine on 1080p, 30. Loop recording, you can set to 3, 5 or 10 minutes. I'm just going to leave it on the default of 3, I think. Date and time, that's what we've just set up. Date stamp, we want that on, so it tells you the time and date on the video files at the bottom. Record audio off, I'm not going to record audio, I don't need that. Uh, beep sound off, because that's rather annoying. EV, uh, what does EV do? Let me think. 
I'll check the manual. Okay, so the manual doesn't actually mention the EV, but I'm pretty sure this is the exposure value that you can adjust for if the camera's getting washed out in daytime or too dark at night time. Frequency, uh, this is 50 or 60 hertz. Depending on the area you're in and what the traffic lights and everything operate at, they might be flickery on the video. If they are, you have to change this setting to the other setting. Speed unit, kilometers hour, mile per hour. Not that that really matters in my case because I don't have the uh, GPS module. Accelerometer, low, middle, high or off. TV mode, NTSC or PAL. PAL we are in Europe. Language English. Screen saver. That, I imagine, will turn the screen off after a predetermined amount of time. So I'm going to go with three minutes. Motion detection, that is, I believe, if you are packed up, it will detect motion and start recording when someone is in front of the uh, camera. In the manual, under video recording, it says here, for time-lapse recording, that uh, if it's switched on, this function will save a picture per second and make a video played at 30 frames per second. So I assume that means it turns 30 seconds into one second, so uh, it will speed up a journey. Uh, we've got format here, that formats all data, presumably off the SD card, of which I will need to put in, which is here. And we've got format warning, 15, 30, 60, they are off. Okay, I don't actually see anything about the format warning in the manual either, but I'm just going to leave that off. Default will restore it to the default settings, I'm pretty sure, and version will just tell you the version of the software on the device. So let's go back into here, and I think that's a lot all of the settings. Uh, now the buttons here have got multiple functions, so these buttons can do different things depending on where you are. So I'm going to put a SD card in and then I can demo you what these buttons do in different cases. Okay, so the SD card is inserted now. Plug this back in and power on. There we go. Alright, so first of all, I'm going to go into the settings menu. Oh, wait a minute. It starts recording. It's on, okay. Well, I'm going to format this anyway. Because it is still in the format of the old dash camera. Everything will be deleted. Okay. Alright, so the card's formatted now. And now it is recording away. So yeah, when you turn the camera on, it's going to start recording automatically like this. Now, these buttons, as I said before, have got multiple functions. The ones that I was using to set up the camera are called Playlist and Setup Menu. And in that one, this one returns to the previous menu, so that becomes a back button. This one here goes up, this one here goes down, and this one here is Enter or Confirm. So as they're labelled, that's the standard layout for them. Now when it's in recording mode, which it is now, you can enter emergency recording mode by pressing this button and this little sign will appear at the top. Now what that does is it locks the current video file that the camera is capturing onto the card and prevents it from overwriting it. Because what happens when the card gets full is that the camera then deletes the oldest file and starts to write over them again in a big loop. So this file won't be deleted automatically, the camera won't be able to remove it. I'll show you how to undo that and delete them later on. So that's uh, in the playback menu. Now this button here, in recording mode, has got two functions. If you hold it down, it turns on or off audio recording. So you'll notice the microphone comes on. That's now recording audio. Long hold it again, and it mutes the audio again. So, if you short press it, it opens up the playlist menu and goes into play mode. So let's stop recording now and we can watch things back off the card on the camera. So, you can go into photo or video files. I'm going to go into video. You can see here we've got two video files. The first one it recorded of three minutes and the one that I've just protected. So if we go into that, we can play this back with this button. So you can see that's playing at one times now. This is the uh, play and pause button, 
in this mode. You can lock and unlock or fast forward with this button. When the video is playing, if you press this, it will increase the playback speed. This button will decrease the playback speed. So now it's playing in reverse at minus 2, minus 4. So that's what those do when you're playing a video back. And if you press this button, it'll take you back to this menu. Now, if you are just viewing the video file here, you can delete it with this button. Delete current. OK. But it's protected. So to unprotect it, notice the padlock. You use this one, and this lock will change to unlocked. Now we can delete the video file. And click OK. This one wasn't locked, so we can just delete it without having to unprotect it. Now it says no movie. There's also no image, because this can take photos. So let's go back all the way out to recording mode again. So it's now recording video. Now what this button does in recording mode, is if you press it shortly, it opens up the setup and settings menu. But you can also hold it down and it will take a picture. You'll notice the camera picture that pops up. Now the, it keeps recording but it also saves a snapshot at the same time so it doesn't interrupt things. And then finally the OK button whilst you're recording turns the screen off and on. So you can force the screen to go on or off by pressing OK. So well, let's go back into the playback menu and we'll have a look at that picture we just took. There we go, we can see it. I'm just going to delete that. Go back. And I'm also going to delete these videos that I took. Okay. So that's everything I raised off here now. And that's pretty much all of the settings on here. This button on the side is a reset button. If you press that, it will reset the camera. If it gets stuck for whatever reason. So I'm going to go fit this in the car, give this a try out over a few days and get a load of footage to demo to you and show you what it looks like. Okay, so the camera's been installed in the car for almost three months now and been in use. So I've got quite a selection of clips from daytime, nighttime, when it's raining, misty, foggy, high speed clips on the motorway at 60, 70 miles an hour or slower speed residential stuff. I've also captured a few silly drivers along the way. Now the picture quality on this is great it wipes the flow with my previous camera which was the lanka branded one that i reviewed that ended up going faulty after four months and getting stuck in a reboot loop especially at night time the picture quality is far superior everything's much clearer you can see without having to whack the exposure all the way up just a better lens and better camera all round really the picture can be blown up full screen without much of any quality loss even though it's a 1080p video file I can display it on a 4k monitor and it still looks great it picks up a lot of details as well fine details that the other camera was missing and at dark or light times the camera automatically compensates and it changes the exposure and contrast itself which ensures it keeps a good picture all the time as you can see in some of these clips this is all done with default settings that I've shown earlier in the video I haven't changed the exposure or anything at all I've not felt the need to because it's giving great results as it is now the picture can become slightly blurry or pixelated at night times when it's foggy or stormy and raining heavily but that's not really fair on the camera because I think any camera would struggle at those times unless you were paying a lot of money considering this camera only costs around £40 it's pretty damn good value for money I'd highly recommend this one over my previous camera anyway. That cost about £20. This one cost twice as much, but it's a hundred times better. The build quality and the picture quality. And it's been left constantly running so long as the ignition's on in the car, because my cigarette lighter is switched. So every time you turn the engine on, the camera comes on and starts recording it automatically. When you turn the engine off, the camera turns itself off and saves the recording. It's pretty much set and forget. I haven't had to change any of the settings since I did this initial setup in this video. The only time I've ever had to take it off the windscreen was to copy off some clips of other drivers doing silly things when I've uploaded them to Facebook. But you could alternately remove the SD card. I find it easier to just take the whole camera and plug it in via USB. I've not tried the built-in microphone to record the audio. I've just kept it muted. 
but they usually just pick up road noise and vibration anyway on pretty much all the dash cams I've seen clips from. All in all, I can say this is a highly recommended camera, especially over the previous thing that I had that died and got stuck in the reboot loop after about four months, but luckily Amazon refunded me for that anyway, which is where half the money came from for this camera. So anyway, if you've enjoyed this video, please leave a like down below if it helped you out. Subscribe to my channel for future videos on technology and maybe more dash cams in the future. Leave a comment if you've got any questions and I'll try my best to answer them. And thank you very much for watching.